Let's move on to cysticercosis. We know the life cycle, tinea solium in human intestine, lay eggs in the feces, they're ingested by pigs. Also, they can get lodged in the salads, which are uncooked. The oncospheres get hatched and penetrate the intestine and migrate into pig's muscles. If it is partially cooked meat or untreated salad that gets ingested by humans, cysticercosis that develop from oncospheres and can involve any organ of human being as well. Most of them get lodged in muscles, but then, can, then they can go in brain, eyes, and almost everywhere. In the brain, there are four different types of presentations. What we commonly see is parenchymal cysticercosis, but you can have them in subarachnoid space, intraventricular space, or it can be mixed. In the parenchyma, there are four stages which are recognized, vesicular, colloidal vesicular, granular nodular, and nodular calcified. The first stage of vesicular stage is presence of cyst and scolex without enhancement. The second stage is colloidal stage where you get ring enhancement and edema. The third stage is that of granular nodular degeneration where you get decrease in enhancement, decrease in edema, and starting to get calcification. And the last stage of involution has obvious calcifications on CT scan and gradient echo images. This is the first stage where you have this 36-year-old male person with multiple T2 hyperintense lesions. Look at the vesicular stage, which is not ruptured. There is no edema. There is not much enhancement. Why this patient has presented is because these two cysticercosis have ruptured, and then patient presents with conversion. What you have to also notice is there is a cysticercus cyst in the right lateral ventricle. The next stage is when the patient presents after the cyst starts rupturing. So here is a ruptured cysticercus cyst, which is dark on T1, bright on T2, thin dark capsule, a small eccentric scolex. There are two daughter cysts here and a lot of edema. Gradient will show some amount of blooming of the capsule and the scolex. Next stage is granular nodular, where the larva starts getting healed. The fluid in the cyst starts disappearing, so you'll hardly see any brightness in the center. The capsule is darker and thicker ring enhancement, much lesser edema. In this stage of involution, you get calcification, no edema, sometimes a little bit of gliasis that is present. In the ventricles and in the CSS spaces, subarachnoid spaces, you get what is called as racemous type of cysticercosis, which is like cluster of grapes. The walls are thinner, the size is larger, and they can cause hydrocephalus. In subarachnoid space, they can cause florid meningitis, arteritis, stroke, and even death. Fiesta is the sequence which is used when you have cysticercosis in subarachnoid spaces. It can be very useful when you don't see scolex on routine T2 images. So you do a submillimeter fiesta and you'll see scolex well. You can see capsule well, and you can also see dot assist better. When it is in the subarachnoid space or in the intraventricular space, this is in the third ventricle, you get what is called as Bruns syndrome. You get intermittent headaches, ataxia, and drop attacks because of the typical location of this cysticercus cyst. You should not mistake cystic metastasis, typically coming from mucinous carcinomas of colon or stomach, to cysticercus cyst because they also have scolex-like appearance and cystic appearance. But the scolex-like appearance, the size is much larger, and the cystic appearance is also much larger. The nodule is much, much bigger. You don't require MR spectroscopy or perfusion, but if you do one, you will see presence of lactate, alanine, succinate, which is a sugar, and reduced choline. Most of them, as I said, are hypoperfused unless you are in post-extra stage where you get hyperperfusion at the periphery.